as though a million years and at night your pillows wet from your tears and the load of life falls heavy on your brow fall on your knees and praise God anyhow praise God for his love praise God for this life praise God for his son who died for me praise God for the bad times without them I'd never know the good times God, praise God anyhow. If you ever feel discouraged, think of Paul. Then think of Jesus, the one who suffered most of all. Think of thorns that were twisted in his brow in all his pain he praised God anyhow so I praise God for his love I praise God for this life I praise God for his son who died for me I praise God for the bad times. Without them, I'd never know the good times. Praise God, praise God anyhow. Praise God for His love. Praise God for this life. Praise God for His Son died for me. Praise God for the bad times. Without them I'd never know the good times. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. program. I'm Bobby Mullins and it's my privilege to be the host, the preacher, sometimes singer on this program. We operate under the premise that at some time we all need a fresh start. And of course we've all needed the fresh start in life to be it saved, to be born again. And I pray it, if you're not saved and not sure of it at the end of the program, I hope to be able to lead you in a prayer where you'll ask Christ into your heart. But I just sang that song, Praise God Anyhow. I first heard that song, I guess, back in 1973. A couple of different gospel groups did it, and it's just always touched me. And I've never forgotten it. And even though through the years it was not one where they made soundtracks of it, didn't see the sheet music or whatever, you know what line really stood out to me? Praise God for the bad times. Without them I'd never know the good times. And I just thought, oh, how true that is. Sometimes when the times are always so good, I found in my life that's where I get a little lack in my prayer time. 
and just in other things. And it's when, you know, we, we have those bad times, that's how the Lord keeps us on our knees. He doesn't really put us on our knees, but that's when we get on our knees sometimes when things aren't going so good. It's just good to have balance in life. And so I, I want to deal with the subject tonight that uh, I wish every Christian could follow it. You know, recently they had these um, challenges going around. They had the cold water, ice water challenge. Now, I didn't do that. I forgot what the charity was, but I have some charities and Christian organizations I sponsor, and I can't just do it for everybody. And certainly wasn't going to have ice cold water poured on me <laughs> to do it. But everybody, it seemed, was doing it just about. And I'd see it on Facebook where someone would get dunked with the water, and then they'd challenge somebody else and all that. And I couldn't help but think about what my parents, a lot of them, would say to us growing up in Memphis on the Mississippi River and talking about so-and-so did this or whatever, and they'd say, well, if they told you to go jump off the Mississippi River Bridge, would you do it? You know, of course, you know, sometimes we don't need to become a part of all the fads, and, and I think it had a good purpose to it, but I've read of some here recently where a couple of students have died for whatever the challenge was that they were doing. I even saw a a girl, a young lady, she put up a challenge when all this Blue Lives Matters was coming in and so on, where she went around two or three times and she'd stop and have someone uh, make the video with her, her phone camera with a policeman. And he was where he would tell them his name and she would ask questions, how many years have you served and things like that. And then she'd just look out there and she'd say to one of her friends, I just stopped with Officer so-and-so today to let him know how much we're grateful for him, and this is the Blue Lives Matters challenge. I challenge you to do the same thing. Well, it didn't go viral like the ice bucket, but you know, we have things like that that happen, and sometimes they do go viral. Recently, I challenged our church, and then some of you know, I just put it on Facebook. I wasn't doing it to try to get people to say, oh, they want to be a part of the challenge. I, I really am not trying to do it for that reason. I'm trying to do it for what it does to us personally. But I, I'm, I just get tired of the negativity that's in our world today. People can always find fault with something. I say there are some people who are chronic fault finders. The Pharisees were like that with Jesus. Once they started finding fault with him, they, they would keep at it, and Jesus wouldn't say much, but then eventually he started answering them back. But even when he was performing healing and freeing people, a man who'd been born blind from birth could see, you know, those great miracles, they always found fault. They wanted to put Lazarus to death after the Lord raised him from being dead for four days because they were jealous, but because of Lazarus, people were trusting in Jesus. Man, it's amazing what can happen with people. But there's so much negativity today about politics, people on either side. There's a lot of negativity between athletic teams toward each other. And I'm just kind of at a point, again, I was, you know, let's focus on what we have. Let's focus on the ways that God has blessed us and be more positive. I kind of had it in my mind one time to do, a, you know, we have Facebook. I, I tell folks, I want to start Gracebook. Gracebook is for people who are Christians just to get on there and talk about what the Lord's done for them. But you know what would have happened? Somebody would have started arguing theology. Let, let me tell you what. We had a, a, a gospel group. I won't give their name, but... I mean, I started going to see these guys when I was in college, and they were not much older than me. And they've been around all through the years. Members of the groups, you know, they're, they're older. They're like me. They're all gray hair and white hair. We've grown old together. We've grown bigger together and so on. But, I mean, they're still around. The original tenor is still with the group. He owns the group. And the baritone, who I first heard when I went to a mall singing convention, uh, in 1974 in Knoxville, the original bass singer who, they had a bass singer, but this fellow was the one who really sang bass. Well, they're still with them. So I just put a picture and said uh, on Facebook, announced we were having them in concert. 
well, I'm friends of some of them, so it went to all their friends. And I mean, we started getting responses from all over the country. Oh, you're gonna have a great concert. I love this group and so on. And then there's one comment that a guy puts, not the same. Well, I thought, I don't know what he meant by that. Well, one of the men in my church put on there, nothing's ever the same, sometimes better. Man, I like that. Nothing's the same, sometimes better. Well, before I deleted it, because we're announcing the concert. We're not trying to get in an argument why that group isn't the same anymore. But one guy put on there, explain. And he just gave the name of one new member of the group. And this is a guy who started traveling with them, I don't know, three or four years ago, who can play bass guitar. He can do other instruments. He can sing any of the parts in the group. He's one of the most talented young men in gospel music today. He preaches. And, and I love it. As a matter of fact, we had him recently in concert and their lead singer could not be there. He did the lead part that, that night and you wouldn't have known the difference. But not the same. And so I deleted that post. You know, I didn't want any negativity there, but I thought, oh my goodness. But I thought about what the church member had said. Nothing's the same, sometimes better. You know, we can go back and try to make things the way they were at one time. We can be gone for years. I, I've seen people leave and move out of town and they come back to their home church after about 10, 20 years. And it's not the same as it was. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully there has been some movement and growth and so on, but sometimes it isn't the same. But sometimes not being the same is better. And so in life, we've got to start learning. Don't always look at the downside or the negative side of something. Let me just read a few verses from the 145th Psalm. I want to talk about praise tonight. The Bible says, I exalt you, my God, the King, and praise your name forever. I will praise you every day. I will honor your name forever and ever. One of the things that I do every day, I Say, Lord, my tongue shall be filled with your righteousness and your praise all day long. Psalm 35, 28 was my life verse for one year. I have life verses for various things, but ever since I started doing that, it's changed me. When you pray every day, Lord, my tongue shall be filled with your praise all day, righteousness and praise all day long. Every time I start to say something, whatever, that, that's not appropriate, it catches me. I've become a more positive person now. Yeah, I have my moments. My wife has to get on to me all the time in the car, you know, about stuff, but uh, it hits me quickly. But praising God. I gave a challenge, uh, not only in my church, but every church I've ever been in, and, and I know a lot of people, I believe there are some Baptists who have a black, black belt in backbiting. I mean, they backbite all the time. And some of them have the, the highest degree of a black belt you can get. That ought not to be. And so I put out a challenge to our church, and I call it the we're fellowship, the FBCH Praise God Instead Challenge. I want to put that out to you tonight. You can share it with others if you want to, but we call this the Praise God Instead Challenge. I sang the song Praise God Anyhow. That sometimes it's tough in life. Things don't go the way we want, but praise God anyhow. So what I want to suggest is every time, and I ask them, that you want to, someone may say something ugly to you or whatever, and you want to give your opinion and let them have it, praise God instead. Every time you hear something on TV, or you hear something you don't like, and man, you're ready, you get all riled up, praise God instead. Now, since I've started doing that, I have praised God a lot. <laughs> you know, even when, you know, just things, you, you know you could give it back to somebody. Why? I found that when people don't like you and people are critical and so on, a lot of times they don't want to know the truth. They don't, they just want to get their way and say that they won't care about the truth. If you say something to them, they'll take it wrong. So here's, here's what I want to put out before you tonight the Praise God Instead Challenge. Every time I'm tempted to say something ugly to somebody else, or even somebody says something ugly about somebody and I get all riled up, praise God instead. 
I usually don't deal with uh, negative situations. Now, I know we have to unless I have to because I want to devote my time and energy to positive matters. But tonight I'm reading here from the 145th Psalm that says praising God's greatness. I've already read verses 1 and 2. I exalt you, my God, the King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. I will honor your name forever. So praise God anyhow, even when you don't feel like it. It's amazing what praising can do and do it every day. I've always said the, the time you need to pray is when you don't feel like praying. That's the same thing with praise. Let me read on. Verse 3 of Psalm 145. Yahweh is great and highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. I will speak of your glorious splendor and your wonderful works. They will proclaim the power of your all-inspiring works, and I will declare your greatness. They will give a testimony of your great goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The praises and proclamations of previous generations are why we can praise and proclaim His ways and works today. So you and I need to do our part so that the next generation can do the same. Let's read on verse uh, 8, or let's say verse 5. I will speak of your glorious splendor and your wonderful works. They will proclaim the power of your awe-inspiring works, and I will declare your greatness. They will give a testimony of your great goodness and joyfully will joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is slow to anger and compassionate. He's great in faithful love. The Lord is good to everyone. His compassion rests on all that He has made. All you have made will praise you, Lord. The godly will bless you. A couple of things to keep in mind is that we should praise God at any time because He has been faithful to us at all times. You got that? We ought to praise God at any time because He has been faithful to us at all times and forever. He is the same. So we should remain faithful in all our ways to God even though we do adapt in some ways to the changes in our culture but without adapting the carnal compromise of our culture. That's a fine line to, to fall in, the way to say things in a proper manner. I mean, our culture has gotten very lax when it comes to words that when I was a child, you'd have gotten your mouth washed out with soap. And we've just become so lax. But I want to tell you as a Christian, go that extra step and just don't use those words. Just try to set the right example. Let me keep on reading now. Let's see. Uh, verse um, 14. The Lord helps all who fall. He raises up all who are oppressed. All eyes look to you, and you give them their food in their due time. You open your hand, and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. And I'm going to go on and read to the end of the chapter. The Lord is righteous in all His ways, and gracious in all His acts. The Lord is near all who call out to Him, who call to Him with, who call out with integrity. He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears their cry for help and saves them. The Lord guards all those who love Him, but He destroys all the wicked. My mouth will declare the Lord's praise. Let every living thing praise His holy name forever and forever. Something else to remember as we think about praising God instead the Lord knows what we're going through. And if we look to Him and stay true to Him at the appointed time, He will fulfill our desires. Therefore, praise Him in the bad times as well as the good times. I mean, that's, dark, that's tough to do. You know why we have so many of the Psalms? Because of the bad times that David went through. David had his struggles in life. For seven years, he was on the run from King Saul, who was trying to kill him. But that's where he would, at times, he, he was fearful. 
He, at times, he didn't understand it, he, but he would beg God to help him, and God took care of him and saw him through. But one thing David had to do, my life first as a minister is to be a man after God's own heart who will do all God's will. And that's what God said about David. Oh, he committed a couple of very well-known sins, but God forgave him. There were things he paid for as a result, but God did forgive him. And David is remembered in the Bible as a man after God's own heart who will do all his will. So praise God. Therefore, praise Him in the bad times as well as the good times. And hey, make sure you praise God in the good times. There are times I try every day as I'm doing something just to thank God for it. I've had, uh, I was one of those, I had 2020 eyesight growing up. And I mean, other people were getting into glasses and all that stuff before me. And I finally had to start wearing glasses and probably went as far as you could go. <laughs> you know, each time I'd need a different, um, you know, prescription. Then I had cataract surgery and both cataracts taken out and I see great. And I was doing well, and I was thanking God for my sight and so on. And then one day, I developed double vision. Some people sit side by side, some people up and down. The kind I had is that I'd see side by side. You have to learn when something like that happens, because I went to the doctors and, and went to an ophthalmologist, my regular eye doctor, two different kinds of doctors. And I still am supposed to go see a neurologist to have some tests done, even though that was months ago. But... I saw double, and they couldn't really find out. Eventually, they said it was a palsy of the sixth optic nerve. For some reason, it, it got weak. But, you know, after about two weeks, I began noticing it was improving again. After three weeks, it's been better. I praise God every day for not having double vision anymore. You know what I had to do? I could drive, but you were able to take a piece of Scotch tape and I would put that piece of scotch tape right in the middle of one of my lenses. This may help somebody with double vision. I put it right in the middle of my lens. And when you were driving, it just seemed to, it tells the brain something, but you don't see double vision. Now, it's like almost sent out of one eye, but you do have a little more peripheral vision. But I tell you what, I, I just praise God every day for my sight. Uh, I was able to continue and do most of the things I normally do in life, but, but it was kind of frustrating. I was able to see up close and read, but watching TV couldn't do it. One benefit I told the people at the church the first Sunday I got there, I said, well, I'm glad to see twice as many people here this Sunday as we've had yet, because that's what I was seeing. But praise God in the bad times and praise Him in the good times. Don't forget about that. One other thing I want you to see, we've read this psalm. The Lord will never leave us or forsake us. He will take care of us. We must remain loyal, trusting, and faithful to Him. And praising Him every day should be as natural as breathing. Can you, believe it? you know, we breathe. I just breathe. You ever go to the doctor? Breathe in, I breathe out, you know. We don't even think about our breathing. It just comes so naturally. That's how praising ought to be for the Christian. If Christians became more people of praise than complaining and pointing out what's not right about whoever we don't believe in politically and putting people down that we don't believe in as far as our theology and on, we start focusing on Jesus. I've really put it out to our church too that I want them to put on the garment of praise that it talks about in Isaiah 61.3. And then in Hebrews it talks about bringing the sacrifice of praise. I pray that, you know, they come to church on Sunday. The only reason we are there on the Lord's day is to praise Him, to put on the garment of praise. Then to everything we say and sing ought to be the sacrifice of praise. I pray every week that God will not let a quenching or grieving spirit be within our church. And I tell you, there's nothing that can affect the you know, atmosphere of a church, the negative people who are complaining and, and so on. But oh, how it lifts us when people are praising the Lord. My mouth will declare the Lord's praise. I want to challenge you again today. What we'll call the Praise God Instead Challenge. Every time you're tempted to say something ugly, 
every time you're tempted to let somebody have it or somebody says something to you, sometimes the best thing to do is walk away because you could say, well, I could say to you or, you know, you you know, we could always, can I tell you this? I've met many, many good people a lot better than me, but somebody can always find something negative to, find, to say about somebody. You may think nobody doesn't like you, but there's somebody who probably doesn't like you. But the best thing about this is God loves you. <laughs> and that's what we're all about. And that's why we ought to be people of praise that God has seen us through to get us to this point where we are here tonight. And I would hope every day you might be able to say, Lord, this is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So, Lord, my tongue shall be filled with your praise and your righteousness all day long. I want to offer thanksgiving as a sacrifice to glorify you, God. That, the Bible says our praise and thanksgiving is a sacrifice to God. Well, those are just some ideas about praise. You want to know about praise? Read, read the book of Psalms. And it's one praise after another. But it's amazing what praising can do. It can make your life completely different. It can turn your life around. You might be known as being a sourpuss. Wouldn't you want to be known as someone who's joyful to be around? And the praise of God is on your life. Hey, if you've never been saved... I want to give you something to praise God about. The Bible says all of sin and come short of the glory of God because of our sins. We're going to die, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. So I want to ask you to join with me right now, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And pray this, Dear God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. Dear God, I believe that I am a sinner. I thank you for your great love for me. I want to repent and turn from my sin, and I want to live from this moment on in my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now, friends, find you a good church to get into, to be around some Christians who can help you to grow in the faith. But that one thing you need to do, read your Bible. I'd suggest you start reading the Psalms and then Read the book of Mark, which is kind of short, but it'll get you through the life of Christ and just get to know about Jesus. Uh, if there's something we can do to help you in the ministry, just uh, write to the information that is there on the screen. And I pray you can say as I close this program out every week, thanks be to you, O God, who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.